Hallelujah. Again, welcome everyone to God in the Midst Radio. G I T M Radio. We welcome you to our broadcast. This is the Friday Night Lights edition. And I am your host, co host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with my co host, Pastor Paul McCoy. Pastor Paul isn't with us tonight, um, but we will go on and preach God's word and teach God's word. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Father God, we praise you this day for being such a marvelous, wonderful, and awesome God. We thank you for all that you do, all that you're going to do, and all that you have done. We worship you, Lord, just because of who you are. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We ask you now, Lord, to bless this technology, Lord, that we're on on Facebook and blog talk radio lord on the internet through the telephone lines and conference calls lord we just ask you right now to to anoint afresh we plead the blood of jesus over this technology lord we plead the blood of jesus over everyone who's listening to this broadcast now and those who will be listening in the future lord we plead your blood right now over their lives, over their situations and their circumstances. Lord, we ask you to bless them, bless their families, bless their homes, bless their communities, bless their cities, their towns, their states, their counties, their country, Lord. Just bless as only you can. We plead your blood over them right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that this word go forth uh, according to your will and your way that it might touch someone, that it might encourage someone, that it might go deep down in someone's soul, that they might produce the fruit that you would have them produce. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. For tonight, for tonight, the Lord has uh, led me um, to talk about the word of God um, and how uh, God releases the word of God and we're going to look at the parable of the sower the parable of the sower and um, it's in several places in the Bible it's in Matthew uh, the 13th chapter Mark the fourth chapter and Luke the eighth chapter but we're going to look at Matthew the uh, 13th chapter tonight Matthew 13th chapter and I'm going to read from the New King James Version of the Bible, um, starting at verse 3, Matthew 13, starting at verse 3. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, I, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, there were, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now skip down to verse 18 of uh, Matthew chapter 13. Verse 18, it says, therefore, hearing the parable of the sower, when Anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it when the wicked one comes and snatches away that what what snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. 
But he who received the seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he was not rooted in himself, but, but endured only for a while. For, for when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbled. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfaithful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produce some a hundred, oh, some sixty, and some thirty. With this parable tonight, I want to raise the question, what kind of dirt are you? Now, some of you may get upset because uh, that it seems like a trick question. You, you're trying to get me to say I'm dirt and, and you're trying to get me to say, what kind of dirt am I? Well, the fact of the matter is when God created us, he created us from the dirt and he took us and molded us into humans and then he breathed the breath of life in us. We are all nothing but dirt. Don't think more highly of yourself than you are. You ought to be humble and understand that we all, we all, we all just dirt. If we took all of the water out of us, we would just be a pile of ashes. Dirt. All of us are dirt. So the question then is, what kind of dirt are we? And so in this, in this parable, this, this parable, Jesus is, is standing on a boat uh, talking to the people and, and he gives this parable. Parables are, 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 are earthly stories with heavenly meanings. Parables are stories that convey deep and, uh, and sometimes hidden and complex truths. And God, when, when Jesus placed this word out there, he, he was trying to, 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 to get into the hearts and, and the minds of those who were listening to him. There's a, there's a thing that, that we must understand. Everybody can hear something, but not everybody is listening the same and getting the same understanding. You, you, we, 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 we know stories of, of, of children all raised in the same house, hearing the same words over and over and over again, living, uh, uh, seeing the same examples of how their parents are living, and yet each one of them have a different understanding of what they're supposed to do. And so tonight, we're going to look at this parable and explain, as Jesus did, what this parable should mean to us. And so, as we look at this parable, the first part, we hear Jesus telling the parable. And he tells this parable, he says, there was a sower, someone who's a farmer, someone who puts seeds out, throwing seeds. And he started sowing. And Jesus said, anyone who hears the word of God in the kingdom. Oh, okay, I'm going up too far. He says, he says, behold, a sower went out. And as he sowed, some of the seeds fell by the wayside. And the birds came and devoured it up. Wayside. Wayside. That's in verse verses four. It fell on the wayside. And the birds came and devoured them. 
Then we go down to, to verse 18, we'll, we'll see, or 19, where he says, this is what this is all about. He says, anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, when, when, when the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, this is he who receives seed by the wayside. As a kid coming up, going to Hughes Quinn Junior High School in East St. Louis, Illinois, we had to cross over the street on the 10th Street. And then when we got towards Broadway where the school was, we made a pathway to go into the backside of the school. And that pathway was, was made long before I ever got to junior high school. I, I assume my, my brothers and my sisters made that path. I, I assume others around me who were older than me had made that path to walk. And when you make a path through 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 grass or a path through a field, uh, the, 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 the ground gets compact and it gets hard. And that pathway, it, it'll never grow anything. I went by there maybe, uh, what, last year, and I, I wondered if that path was still there. Because when, when, when something has been walked on, it crushes it. And that thing that is crushed, especially if it's the dirt, has a hard time receiving any seed. Oh, you got to hear me. Many people have been brutally mistreated. They've been talked about. They've been lied on. They've been abused and misused. We're in a time where, where, where the hashtag me too is all over the place because everybody seems like they have been abused by someone, sexually harassed, harassed or even brutally raped. These people have been walked on and their hearts have been brutalized and they've been walked on and their hearts are so hard with anger and bitterness and unforgiveness that because they've been walked on so much. When the word of God it's sown. It's sown on the wayside. On the wayside. And it never, ever really sprouts. Why? Because Jesus says, he says, he says, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. The wicked one, he, he knows how to keep bringing up all of that hurt and all of that pain because we haven't let go and let God. All of that bitterness, all, all of that animosity that's, that's, that has festered inside of us because we've been walked on and mistreated so bad. The word can't get into our heart. And so that word, the wicked one comes and snatches it up. The wicked one comes and, and just takes it away. The birds are the wicked ones. And, and they come and they just devour. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. If there's someone here tonight. You're listening to this and you go, why can't I understand the word? Why I don't have a desire to get the word? Well, I'm here to tell you. And listen to me closely. You may have been walked on. You may have been abused. You may have been mistreated. But, but it's not your fault. You, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't blame God. You can't blame yourself. Because Jesus died for your sins and he can break through and turn that ground over. 
Oh, hallelujah. That it might receive the word of God. So if you've been one of those people, just pray. God, I don't know what to say. But this right now, if I ever needed the Lord before, I surely need him now. Lord, come on in, because I need you every hour. Oh, I'm going on to the next part of the parable. He says in verse 5, some fell on stony places where, where they did not have much earth and and. and and they immediately sprouted up because they had no depth of earth. But the sun, when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no roots. They withered away. Then we, we go back down now to, 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 to verse 20. He says, but he who received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and re immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has not root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. This, 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 this person's heart is a heart of stone. It's a rocky place. They've been through rocky points in their lives. They, they, they've had the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs. But all of a sudden, Somebody preaches a word that bowls right down their alley. They come right down their street and they hear the word of God. And when they hear the word of God, they, they get excited and they receive the word of God. But they can't give up their past. They can't, they can't give up. All of those worldly things that, that they enjoy in their past life before they heard the word. They, they don't, they don't want to walk away from it. They don't want to sit there under someone teaching them the word of God and, and, and laying it out precept after precept. And they go. And this is to me like many people in the church. Pastor, deacons, trustees, choir members get all upset. Something was said. Something was done. And, and, and all that joy that this person had when they heard the word because of the tribulation and the persecution of that word that they received. They immediately stumble. Oh, have mercy, God. The message Bible says, this, this seed cast in the gravel. That, that, that's the hard place. This is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm. But there is no soil of character. So when the emotion wires out, and some difficulty arise, there's nothing to show for it. That's why it's so dangerous when, 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 when people just preach prosperity. Not, not, not the whole real meaning of prosperity, but they just talking about the materialistic side. And people walk around, oh, yeah, I, I got it, I got it. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm doing this to, to, to make sure I'm sowing my financial seed that I might get a financial blessing. But yet, you ain't rooted and grounded in God's word. You don't know why seed time and hard this really works. You hadn't read the word for yourself. 
You hadn't studied it. You just listened to somebody that, that's just telling you, but you ain't went back and looked at it for yourself. Because in the word of God, there is good news, but there's also cautions and warnings. And we have to be ready for that. And if you truly get the word in you, you go always have haters and people who are going to try to deceive you or hurt you. And if you're not ready and rooted and grounded in God's word, you'll stumble and fall. It even goes to the point of even having too much pride. Because you have seen these great financial blessings, but you got all of this pride because you think because of what you've done is getting you all of this. No, it's God's grace and his mercy. So stay humble before you stumble. Oh, hallelujah. The next one, the next one, the next one. The next one is 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 the is 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 the one. Oh hallelujah! Mm. That fell among the thorns. We talked about the the wayside. And we talked about the stony places, the rocky places. But but this one here fell among thorns. Verse seven says, and some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked down the thorns. Listen to, to what Jesus says down in, 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 in uh, uh, hold on. Did I get myself mixed up? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. Yeah, now he says, now, listen, he says, verse 22, he says, listen, now he who had received seed among the thorns is he who hears the world word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful and he becomes unfruitful the message bible says it this way the seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news but weeds of wary and illusion about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangles what was heard and nothing comes of it. Oh, God's blessing me. God's blessing me and I want more and I want more and I want more. But, but, but all you're doing is, is, is getting weeds of the world strangling out. The word of God, I love you. Constantly worrying about getting more. Trying to be better than everybody else. And it just chokes you out. Instead of being those who want to help somebody. God blesses us to be a blessing. He gives us stuff so that, that we can show our appreciation by helping others. But those that are in the weeds, in the thorns, they get deceived because of the cares of the world. You didn't see them. You probably talked to them. You tell a man like, I got me a, I got me another car, new car. What kind of car you got? Oh man, all, all I got is a little hoopty, but man, I tell you that hoopty, that hoopty run, I'm so appreciative to God. Well shoot, I don't know about you. God God gave me a Jaguar. And shoot, I said, Oh man, you get a good deal on that Jaguar? Yeah, man. Shoot, I'm paying seven hundred dollars a month. You what? Yeah, I'm paying seven hundred dollars a month. I got my Jaguar. I say, well, okay, man, be blessed, cause I know in my mind. 
He got to worry about that car note every month. And, 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 and if you got behind the scenes, you would see that the Jaguar car note got paid, but the children ain't got no food in the, in the refrigerator. Oh, have mercy, God. Because too busy trying to keep up with the Joneses instead of walking in the blessings that God have for you. Oh, what kind of dirt are you? You say, oh, pastor, you being hard tonight with this word. Yes, because Jesus was hard with this word. So the last, the last one it says, it says in verse eight, but others, the word of God fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The message Bible for that same verse, verse eight says, some fell on good earth and produce the harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening to this? Really listening. Let's go down now to, to verse 23. Verse 23 says, But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some 60, and some 30. Oh, hallelujah. The message Bible for verse 23 says, the seed cast on good earth is the person who hears and takes in the news and then produce a harvest beyond his wildest dream. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God for the good ground. I, I, I pray that everybody that, that's listening to this message, that you desire to be good ground. Good ground is, is, is those who hear the word of God. They, they receive it and then they get an understanding. Proverbs tell us, in all I getting, get an understanding. How does this word apply to me? How does this word help me? The King James Version, thank you, Sister, Sister Jackson, Brother Jackson, said they hear that word in their heart that they might not sin against God. Oh, hallelujah. And when you don't sin against God, you're in the will of God, and you will produce fruit, fruit of love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, faith, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. But not only will you produce that inner character, you will know that when tribulation comes, when trials come, that you can count it all joy. Knowing that, 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 your, that, that your trials and your tribulations produces an experience. And that experience produces hope because that you've got character. And you could then be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your work is not in vain. And the glory of God will be upon you. Oh, hallelujah. That you can produce a harvest beyond your wildest dreams. What is the harvest? The word of God, Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he sends more laborers. God wants folks who hear his word to be good grounds that they could go out and share that word. See, here's the thing. When a seed is put in the ground, 
that seed goes through a process where if it's in good ground, it'll start producing fruits, start producing uh, uh, roots, and, and then the roots uh, start producing a stalk, and, and the stalk uh, start producing uh, uh, the, the branches, and, 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 and then the branches start producing the, the fruit of that, that tree or that seed, that, and then the seeds fall out of the root, I mean, out of the, out of the fruit, and then that fruit falls to the ground, and then more plants, trees, are then created. So today, I want you to realize that you are good ground. Oh, hallelujah. Because you understand that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You've heard the word of God. And God tells us, uh, Pastor Helen brought this up last night. He says, in, in, in John chapter 15, he says, if my word abides in you. And he says, if you abide in me, excuse me. John chapter 15, verse 7, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have found various ways to sow your word into our hearts. We have preachers preaching, teachers teaching. We have the computers with conference calls and live recordings. We have the television and the radio, all kinds of ways that your word is going forth, Lord. It's being sown. Lord, we just ask you to help us to be good ground. That your word might go deep into our hearts, that it might be hidden in our hearts that we may produce a harvest beyond our wildest dreams. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before I leave a recording, I always like to give those who are listening now and might listen in the future an opportunity to give your life to Christ. This word has been sown in your heart. And I told you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You've heard the word of God today. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for my sins. And God raised him from the dead. He was the seed that was planted in the ground. And he came up on that cross. And he died for your sins and mine and was buried in that ground and God raised them from the dead that he might give life and forgiveness to all those that believe in him. And now he who is truly the word that became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, is still sending his words out to his messengers all over the world. And now you've heard it. What kind of dirt are you? Will you receive it in good ground? So if you will, just pray this prayer with me that you might receive the word and be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth 
and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook, be blessed. If you want to join us on the conference call um, to get prayed for, add comments, or, or just get a word of encouragement or give a praise report, you can call 619 639 Four seven three three again six one nine six three nine four seven three three. Facebook be blessed.